Hi, this is Mark from Wicked Design. In this Elementor tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this smooth scrolling video effect when you scroll down the page. So let me give you a quick demo of what we're going to be pulling off. So this right here is a 3D animation I created inside of Blender. And then I wanted to have just an example where you can scroll down the page and it will play the video. So you probably have seen this before on websites or you've seen other tutorials. So what I'm going to do is show you the way that I do it. So I'm going to show you how I export everything out in Premiere. And there's one really important uh, feature that you need to make sure that you have enabled when you export your video in order for it to play back smoothly. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like when you don't have that option enabled and when you do. So as you can see, it's nice and smooth right here. So when I scroll down and up, there's no like lagging inside the browser. So in this video, I'm gonna be using Elementor Pro and I'm gonna show you exactly all the little like nuances you're gonna to have to do and maybe a little bit of CSS. So it's gonna be a little more of an advanced tutorial, but if you just follow all of the steps, you're gonna be able to pull off something just like this with your own video. So now let's just jump right into the tutorial. So like I said, this is actually a rendering I did inside of Blender. And what I'm gonna do is I just needed to export 100 frames right here. So you can see right here, this is the camera movement. It kind of starts here. And then when you animate, it will start to go up the wall a little bit. So what I did is I rented out 100 different frames and now I'm gonna show you inside of Premiere the one really important feature that you have to enable in order for this to all work correctly and run really smoothly. So now let's jump into Premiere and show you that feature. All right, so here we are inside of Premiere and this is just a really simple timeline where I just have my little animation going on right here. So what I'm gonna do is now export the file. So what I'm gonna do is go underneath your file, export, and then media. So this is how I always export all my videos or animations is using the media encoder application from Adobe. So since this is gonna be on the web, you can go ahead and disable audio. You're gonna never really need audio on. Then what we need to do is go underneath your video. I'm gonna click on more. And you could always, 30 frames a second's good. So this is at like 29.97, that should be good. You can always go ahead and change this if you need a different uh, frame rate, but let's just go ahead and keep that default. Now what I'm gonna do is show you the most important part of all of this to run smoothly is this right here. So underneath advanced settings, there's this thing called keyframe distance. And by default, it sticks to 90 for some reason. This actually needs to be at one. So you can go ahead and click this box and you should be able to change this to one. So what this is doing is it's making sure that it's always gonna be playing the, the next frame. So if, when I scrub this video right here, it's literally a hundred different frames just kind of all stitched together. So when you're scrubbing like on a website, it's gonna be the same thing. You can kind of use these lines down here. Just think of each one of these lines as like a frame. So I think by default, it would skip over like a whole bunch of frames so if it's like in between, it's not gonna stick to each frame. So I think that's what that one is right here. It literally just means when you scrub, always just stick to one frame. Why that's not by one by default, not 100%. I think this will actually increase your file size a little bit. So that might be why. Um, so if you go right here underneath your bitrate, this is where you can go ahead and change the file size. So right now it's like at eight megabytes. You can see where my mouse is. If you need it to be smaller, um, you can go something like maybe eight and 12. This is gonna be the settings where you need to probably do a few different variations of this to see if it looks good or not on the website. And you can see right here, it's down to like three megabytes. So normally for any sort of video on the website that's like self-hosted like this, under 10 is like ideal. Um, best case would be you wanna be in the single digits, like the under the fives. I think five is like a good number I like to stick around. So. In this case, it's around three megabytes, but it might be a little compressed. Then that's it, you go ahead and hit export. Now we can jump into WordPress, upload it, and then I'm gonna show you inside of Elementor Pro all of the different things you need to do. So this is gonna be a little more advanced because I'm gonna be using a little bit of JavaScript and some CSS to pull this off. But if you follow all the steps, you're gonna be able to pull this off on your website real easy. So now you have your video file, and now we can go into your media library and just upload it. So in this case, you can see I have a bunch of them in here. And this one right here is the good one. So you can go ahead, just play it. Um, it's a little compressed, but I, you know, for the, this, this demo, it's good. So go ahead and just copy this uh, to your clipboard because we're going to need this um, in the next part is when we add the video player, you need to have a direct URL. So now I'm going to jump into the back end of that page and kind of just show you how I have everything set up. So as you can see right down here, we have one main container and then I just have these little filler containers down here. So you can see right here, this is just filler. I just wanted to show that you can make it where there's more content below. 
So let's go up into the first main container and what you need to do is a couple different things. First thing is go ahead and just make it full width. So the main container should be full width and then you can set this to 100%. And then this right here is gonna determine how high it is. So if I go, so as you can see, it's 300 VH. So it's gonna be three different heights of the browser that it's sitting in. So this you can this will determine like how fast it is so if you have it at smaller it will animate quicker but they have to scroll less or if you change that to like a thousand it will take a lot longer for them to scroll so you might need to play around with the height depending on how fast you want your animation or video to play then you can go ahead and i just have the direction down start and the align is start this kind of just makes sure everything's kind of pushed to the top then right here you're going to want to go ahead and give this a unique id because we will need this in the next part when we add the code so it's just called video dash section so you can change this whatever but if you change this you need to make sure you update it inside the code and then i just have everything else uh, i zeroed out the margin and padding so there's no weird like buffer right here now you can go ahead and drop in an HTML widget. So as you can see, I have this HTML widget. If I remove this, it's just gonna be blank, so I just wanted to visually show. So drop in this HTML, and that's what the URL right here that you just copied, this is gonna be what you need to update. So this is the MP4 uh, that you need to make sure that you have in your media library. And then, as you can see, this is just using a simple video tag, ID equals scroll dash video. So this is another ID that the JavaScript is going to be calling. So just keep everything like I have it, and then you can always change it if you need. But make sure it all works first before you start changing names out. And then you just need to make sure you also have preload auto. And then this is really important. It needs to be muted and plays in line. I believe you need to have this in here as well. Now, when you do that, it might not look exactly the way I have it. So here's the settings that I had to change up, and that is underneath your advanced. I went underneath uh, width and then I changed this to 100 VW. So when you start to scroll right here, it's not going to update inside of here because we're using like an HTML widget. But let's say I go ahead, I, just want, I always like to show things. So if I hit publish and hit refresh, you're going to see the video is not going to be full width anymore. It's going to be like 50%. So if you start making changes to your widget right here and it's not showing up, it's that's just how it's gonna be because it's not really like an Elementor widget, so it's not like responding to this. So you can go ahead and just, like I said, uh, 100 VW in this case. So now if I go down into the CSS, I do have one little line of CSS right here, and this is gonna make it where it could fit the height of your uh, container and then kind of fill it up. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure it says selector video, and I'm using height 100 DVH. So this is a dynamic viewport height. And what that's gonna do is Take into account, uh, for example, all of this stuff where my mouse is, this is like your browser URL and all of that, it's not gonna account for that. So it's actually gonna put it inside the height of just the main container that the browser's sitting in. Hopefully that makes sense. So in most cases, you're gonna wanna keep object fit to cover. So if there's a few different ones you can do in CSS. So you can do contain instead. And you can see right here, it's gonna always keep your dimensions or your aspect ratio correct. So right here, I'm like on tablet. So that might work for you if you have like, I don't know, let's say like a space background and this is like a video with stars. So it doesn't really matter if there's like the letterboxing. It's kind of like a TV. Let's think of it like that. Then that won't matter as much. So you can scroll and it will be fine. And then the other one, this is probably never going to be a use case, but I'll just put it in here anyways. It's called fill. What that's going to do is stretch it. So if you have a video where it doesn't matter if it gets stretched, that could work for you. But I would say for most cases, cover is gonna be the good one. Now what we need to do is another step, and that is to make sure that this is sticking inside of the main container. So while you have the HTML widget selected, go underneath your motion effects, make sure sticky is on top. And then in this case, I don't have any offsets or effects or anything like that, so this is all zero. But this is really important. You're gonna to wanna to make sure this says stay in column. Because if you don't have that stay in the column, it's not going to work correctly. So let's just go ahead and keep that on. So those are all of the settings you need to have to be able to embed the player. Now the next step is we need to actually add the JavaScript code to here. And then it'll all start to work. So what I did in this case is this bottom container, I just threw in an HTML widget. So what I like about this is you can keep this all on the same page. You don't have to add any other code anywhere else. So let's just go ahead and stretch this out. 
And as you can see, this is using uh, GSAP and there's scroll trigger. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you have these two scripts up here. And then the rest of it, you don't really have to touch too much, uh, but I will go through. These are gonna be those IDs that I told you about. This is actually the ID for the video player. And then down here is the trigger, which is the main container. So like I said, if you change any IDs or names, you need to update them inside of here. But what I like is you can go ahead and I have this right here. You can uncomment this out. This is the markers. So let me show you what that is. So if I hit publish and I view this on the front end, it's hard to see on the video, but right here, there is a green line. This is the start. And then you can see right here in the very, very bottom right corner, there's a thing called scroller end. So this is your markers. And then when you start to scroll, it's going to have this end marker right here. So you could see when the bottom of that container hits, it's gonna stop scrolling. So let's make a few adjustments so you can kind of maybe understand a little bit better how this stuff could work. So like I said before, this height right here is gonna determine how long the animation is gonna play for. So right now it's at 300 VH. So it's gonna take the height of three of your browsers to be able to scroll the whole thing. But now if I go and let's change this to a thousand and hit publish, it's now gonna take a lot longer. So you can see right here on the right where my scroll bar is, you could see it's a lot um, smaller. So it's gonna take me a lot longer to scroll. So the user's gonna have to scroll a lot more and then it will hit the bottom. So now if I go and just do something like 200 just to show. So now when I scroll down, you could see that it's a lot shorter. So the 200 seems to be pretty good. So depending on how long the length of your animation or your video is gonna be, will determine how high you want that to be. And what's nice about that is you can then change that on mobile. So let's say on mobile, you wanna have it a lot shorter or taller. You can go ahead and just change that VH right here. So it's kind of like a good way to like dynamically do this without having to like touch a whole bunch of CSS and JavaScript code or anything like that. But once you're happy with that, you can go ahead and just remove that markers um, tag right here if you don't want to. And then if you wanna read a little more about how GSAP stuff works, this is where you can change where this animation will kick in. So here's a quick example. If I change this bottom bottom, let's do 50%. And I'm gonna show you what that's gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and hit refresh right here. You could see that the scroll end is now up here. So once this end piece hits, it's gonna stop the animation. So it gives you a lot more control and you can have the start. Let's do something a little bit different. Let's do the start is at 20% and you want it to end at, let's say, 40%. Let's just see what happens here, hit refresh. So as of right now, when you go to the page, it's kind of already started the animation, and then once it gets, and then it will keep scrolling until that end meets up right here. So this is a lot easier to manage than when you're trying to deal with this stuff in like Elementor, they don't really give you those visual cues on here. So. So I recommend learning more about that if you want to be able to even have more control over like when your animation or video starts and ends. You could just do that right here inside the code. Okay, so now I mentioned that I did have a version where I did not change that one setting out in Premiere. Uh, again, I can't stress how important that one keyframe uh, option is. You need to make sure that's set to one. Let me show you what happens if you don't have that. And so if you're experiencing like lagging, it's probably because you didn't uh, save out the video correctly and doesn't have that one little option inside. So this is a bad version of it. So when I start to scroll, I'm not sure how well it's gonna come off inside the YouTube video, but I'm scrolling up and down and it's like a huge jump. So you could probably see it in the video, but it's not supposed to be jumping like that. And that's why if you, you probably think there's something wrong with the video, like or your code, it's not. It's definitely that one option. Cause when I go back into this test three, it's the same code, I didn't change anything, and just hit refresh. You can see it's much smoother. So now I can scroll, and this is the functionality that you definitely want. Is The user want, doesn't want that lag, because it, if it feels glitchy, it's not gonna be like a good user experience. And that's it for this video on how I was able to pull off this video scrubbing effect, all just using a little bit of JavaScript and Elementor Pro. I am gonna leave the uh, code in the description below if I didn't mention that already. So go down there, download it, and then you can just add this all to your website and just follow all the steps I have. And you'll be able to add this to your website real easy. And thanks for watching this tutorial. This is Mark from Wiki Design.